Hello, this is John Locke, and today I'm talking about the difference between strategic and tactical thinking in SEO, and how it's going to affect uh, your long-term traffic, your long-term success when it comes to SEO campaigns. So let me explain what I mean by tactical versus strategic. Tactical is when you're employing um, tricks or things that you've heard or uh, gimmicks to try and uh, rank higher, but they're short-term plays. They're uh, things that are subject to fluctuations within the Google algorithm, and they may or may not uh, pan out long-term. But strategic thinking is having an all-encompassing strategy which fits in with your other customer acquisition uh, strategies, your other brand strategies, your other um, advertising and marketing strategies. That is more strategic thinking. It's thinking long-term about how you can build up your brand, how you can acquire more customers, how you can increase your traffic, and what steps you need to do in order to get there. So I'm gonna give you some really good examples of tactical versus strategic thinking. So tactical thinking would be uh, reading a blog post or you know hearing advice and uh, say like restructuring the URLs of your site. A so-called siloing and thinking okay if I restructure uh, the URLs to where they line up this way then then that's going to be better for SEO uh, where a strategic mindset would be looking at the content on the page and thinking about how you can improve the content uh, on those specific pages to match the searcher intent uh, of the search queries that your customers are making to where it is the best possible fit uh, for your customers and then thinking about how you can promote that page or promote that piece of content to get in front of more people to build brand awareness and build awareness of your services and your products uh, to where people are looking for it and they uh, associate your brand and your company with that particular product or service. So that is an example of tactical versus strategic thinking. Uh, so anything that you read in an SEO blog and you're thinking uh, like, how do I utilize this on my site in order to take advantage of the Google algorithm without looking at the long-term uh, things of content strategy, of thinking about how it fits in with your larger marketing, with, and without uh, thinking about how it's going to build your brand overall is going to be a short-term effort. And I will give you another example of this. A conversation that I had with a prospect uh, a few months ago. Now this particular company, they manufacture a certain type of uh, aftermarket uh, part. And they specialize in all different parts in this category. Now the, uh, the, the prospect, the, the marketing uh, director, and the CEO were telling me uh, that they have less than 1% of market share in this category. But the top leader, they have probably closer to 90 to 95% of the market share in this category. But what they were telling me is it is because uh, they, the, the competitor brand, uh, puts out a great print catalog and goes to trade shows. Now they go to trade shows, they do other things to uh, promote their brand. They, they sponsor the right types of things. They sponsor the right types of, of events uh, and they go to the right types of trade shows. They sponsor the right types of events. But uh, one thing that they got wrong with this, that I, I believe in my opinion, is they're thinking that this other brand is more successful in SEO because they have a uh, pretty print catalog. And one of the things that they pointed out to me was that they have, this other brand has an ugly website, which is true. It's not a very good website. It's kind of an ugly website. And uh, one of the things I pointed, you know, pointed out to them, I did an audit for them. And I said, you know, your website needs some work. It's, you know, it's, it's okay, it needs a little bit of work. Uh, but, you know, they're like, well, this other brand ranks and they have a, 
you know, a bad website. But the one thing that they're neglecting uh, to look at is that this other brand, people can complete a uh, search goal, meaning they can buy the actual parts on that website. They can buy the parts that they need uh, and they can complete their search goal. Uh, so that's one thing that their current website did not allow for them to do. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing that they're not taking into consideration is this other brand has like a decades long head start. They have like a 40, 50 year head start on them. So if you have 1% market share and you're trying to beat somebody with 90% market share or 95% market share, you need to do everything in your power to try and close the gap. Um, just because this other brand is successful, part of it is because they have built up brand equity over time. They have built up their brand reputation. They've built up brand equity uh, over time. And people uh, synonymize that particular product line with that company. Now, how do you close the gap? Well, one thing that you're gonna have to do is build a brand. And to do that, you're going to have to do uh, some extraordinary efforts in order to close that gap. So, you know, obviously, content on your site needs to match the searcher intent and people need to be able to complete the goals that they need to complete that they can do on this other website. Uh, I would say that, you know, if you're trying to compete against another brand, you need to look as big as that brand. And if they have an ugly website, that's not an excuse for you to have an ugly website. You've got to do everything in your power to look, you know, as big or bigger or better than they are. Well, you need to put out some thought leadership as well. You need to put out uh, content that, that uh, deals with thought leadership in that space. You need to get creative about how you can differentiate yourself. Now, you might have a boring product. You might have a, uh, a product that's hard to promote because it just there's not a lot to it. But you need to think about like adjacent uh, things that you can promote. Uh, now, in this particular case, their part uh, is for a specific type of thing which uh, has a lot of energy and excitement around it. There's, their parts are supplied to particular things which lend themselves to a lot of, um, uh, they could be promoted in a way that would generate a lot of excitement for that brand. If they were to position their brand next to the things in which their parts are um, being used and they could do this very easily, that would generate a lot of buzz around this brand. So this is an example of strategic versus tactical thinking. Um, you have to look at these things in a long-term way. How can you build your brand? How can you build buzz around your brand to where people are know who you are and start searching for you by name and start associating your product or service line with your company and your brand name. Those are things that are longer term and they're harder to do. And because of that, a lot of people fail at this because they're caught up in short term thinking. You know, how can I employ like this, this um, gimmick that I read in the SEO blog instead of thinking about how does this fit in with the longer term, bigger scope marketing and advertising and brand awareness uh, and you know content promotion, content strategy, look at Red Bull. Um, and, and I would say this to this, this uh, brand, this company that, that I am referencing, look at Red Bull for inspiration and look at how they promote their product. Their product does not have anything directly to do with the kind of content that they promote and that they uh, provide. But if you look at all the different things that they promote and associate their brand with, uh, whether it's uh, you know motocross or uh, the, the you know the flying machine where they jump off the pier, or you know break dancing uh, competitions or you know racing, um, the guy that jumped off the uh, <laughs> jumped from the edge of the space is completely sponsored by Red Bull. Now, when people consume that content when they watch those videos on YouTube, when they go to those events, uh, the, the brand that they're you know, recognizing that with is Red Bull. 
Red Bull gives you wings, look at all the extreme things that people are doing, and Red Bull is now synonymized with that. Uh, and they create that content specifically so they can associate their brand with those things. Uh, this is thinking outside the box, and this is more about what SEO is in 2019 and the 2020s. Not tactics, strategy. Think about ways that you can uh, incorporate uh, you know, SEO into your larger marketing and advertising and brand awareness you know, strategies. So content creation, link building, uh, promoting your brand, associating your brand with a specific feeling uh, and a specific, you know, whatever it is that you produce, you want people to associate your brand name with it. And these are ways you're going to have to build market share. You have to be a little bit more clever about it. Um, and yes, the tactical things do. You have to get all the, the, the small things, the technical things right. You absolutely have to do that uh, when it comes to your website. You know, good looking site, you know, loads fast, no broken links, no 404s, uh, building links, internal linking, all those little tiny things to add up into the aggregate. But if you're not doing things to, you know, build buzz for your brand um, and you know, figure out a way that you can generate links through earned uh, content, earning links through in interesting and, uh, you know, exciting content, things that people actually care about within your industry, then in the long term, you're still going to lose. Uh, and I hope that explains better. Tactical versus strategic. Strategic is going to win almost 100% of the time. Strategic thinking is the way to go. Bigger scope. Think bigger. Uh, I hope that explains uh, that my position on this and our position on this. My name is John Locke. My business is Lockdown Design and SEO. We're here publishing videos every single day, so I'd love to see you subscribe. That's all I've got for now. Until next time, peace.